Nothing can quite match the mystery and the beauty of a total solar eclipse. Most people never see one, but that's about to change, as we're going to make a realistic eclipse right here in Blender. We'll do this in three stages, working on two files. In this first part of the tutorial, we'll use particles to create the glowing red prominences along the edge of the solar disk, and render the result to an image texture. In part two, we'll create the corona. And in part three, we'll assemble and animate the eclipse. Let's get to it. Start with a new file from the file menu. Save the file to avoid losing any work. Delete the default cube and the lamp by pressing X and confirming. The 3D cursor should be in the center. If you move it by mistake, reposition it with Shift S, cursor to center. Switch to the Cycles render engine from the render engine menu. In Preferences, in the Interface panel, click Auto Perspective for automatic orthographic projection in top, side and front views. Now press numpad 7 for top view. Add a circle mesh object and in tool shelf set vertices to 6, radius to 0.01, fill type triangle fan, align to view on. Press the period key on the numpad to zoom in. In Outliner, rename the object Prominence. This will be used by the particle system to create the prominences. Tap to Edit Mode. Move the vertices so that the object looks like a low-poly flame. Tap to Object Mode. In Object Panel, in Relations Extras, set Up Axis to Y from the pop-up menu for correct orientation when appearing as a particle. In Materials Panel, click New. Name the material Prominence. Change the shader from the Surface pop-up menu to Add Shader. Set the first shader to Mix Shader and set Factor to 0.6. We now have three shader pop-up menus. Set the first one to Emission and set Strength to 4. Color to Hex Value FF0036. Set the next shader to Transparent. And set the last shader to Emission. Change its color to white. Click the right end of the Strength field and choose a Math shader from the Converter section. Now it's better we move to the Node Editor, so press Shift F3. Arrange the nodes nicely. In the Math node, change the Calculation type to Multiply from the pop-up menu and set the second value of the node to 0 0.15. Add a Light Path node from the Input submenu and connect the transparent depth output to the first value of the multiply node. This node setup will use depth of transparent rays to control emission strength so that the more particles overlap, the brighter they are. OK, back to 3D view. Press numpad 1 for front view, then add a circle mesh object. In tool shelf, set vertices to 256. Radius to 1, fill type nothing. 
align to view on. In Outliner, name the object Sun Disk. In Materials panel, click New. Change the shader from the Surface pop up menu to Emission and set the color to white. Press Shift D to duplicate the object. In Outliner, rename the object Sun Emitter. Press Numpad 3 for Side View, tap to Edit Mode and switch to Edge Select Mode. Press E to extrude, followed by Y, enter minus 0.1. Zoom in and with Ctrl R and rolling the mouse wheel, set three edge loops and press Return twice. Press A once or twice to select all, then click Randomize in Tool Shelf, enter 0.01 for the amount. Tab to Object Mode. Press Numpad 1 for Front View. Duplicate the object with Shift D. In Outliner, rename the duplicate Sun in the Limit. This will be the interior deflector for particles, preventing their loss into the Sun. In the Physics panel, click Collision. Default settings are fine. Tab to Edit Mode. Press S to scale, followed by Y, enter 7. Press S to scale again, enter 0.99. Tab to Object Mode. Duplicate with Shift D again. In Outliner, rename the duplicate Sun Outer Limit. Tab to Edit Mode. From the Mesh menu, choose Flip Normals. Press S to scale, enter 1.06. Click Randomize again. Enter 0.01 for the amount. Tab to Object Mode. This is now the outer deflector for particles. We're going to animate rotation of this deflector to make the particle simulation more dynamic. Go to frame 30. Press I and set the rotation keyframe. Go to frame 100. Press I for rotation keyframe again. Go to frame 60. Press R to rotate, followed by Y, enter 6. Then press I for a rotation keyframe. Select the original object, Sun Emitter. Hide the two duplicates for a clearer view and turn off their render icons. Tap to Edit Mode. Press W and choose Subdivide. Press S to scale, enter 1.003 to make the mesh slightly larger, improving the look of small prominences. We're now going to do some weight painting to mark the areas where particles for large prominences will be emitted. Switch to Weight Paint Mode. In Tool Shelf, set Brush Radius to 6 pixels, Strength to 1, Blend Mode to Add. Mark three or four small red spots on the left of the mesh and three or four on the right. You can redo this later if the results aren't great. Switch back to object mode. Move to frame 1. In Particles panel, click the plus button for a new particle system. Rename it Big Flames. Set emission number to 20,000. End 200. Lifetime 200. Emit from verts. Random on. Velocity. Normal 0.1, Tangent 0.1, Random 0.04. Rotation on. In Physics, Newtonian mode. Size 0.4, Random size 0.5. Mass 2. 
Brownian drag and damp all 0 0.1. In render pane, uncheck emitter and click the object button. Select prominence as the object to duplicate. In field weights, set both force and turbulence to 0 0.1. In vertex groups, select group for density. This is a vertex group automatically created by the weight painting. Now back to the top. Click the plus button for another particle system and name it small flames. Set emission number to 15,000 and 30. Lifetime 1,000. Emit from faces. Random and even distribution on, jittered mode. All velocity settings at zero except tangent at 0 0.001. Rotation on and set initial rotation to object Y from the pop up menu. In physics, Newtonian mode, size 0 0.25, random size 0 0.5. Brownian drag and damp all at 0 0.1. In render pane, emitter off, object mode, select prominence. In field weights, set all to 0. OK, almost done. Unhide the deflectors in Outliner. We complete the particle setup by adding two force fields. Add an empty object and in physics panel click force field. Set type to force if not set already. Strength to minus one. In outliner rename the object field force. Add another empty. In physics panel click force field. Set type to turbulence. Strength to 3, noise to 5. In Outliner, rename the object Field Turbulence. Before we play the animation, we must set up the camera and render settings. In Render Panel, set dimensions to 1000 by 1000. Frame rate 30 FPS. Output file type PNG. RGB mode, depth of 8, compression 100%. Render samples 100, clamp direct 4, indirect 3. Increase transparency, max and transmission bounces to 100. Refractive caustics off. In the world panel, remove the world shader. We want a black background. In Scene Panel, turn off Gravity. In 3D View, press Numpad 1 for Front View if it isn't already. With the Field Turbulence object selected, press the Period key on the Numpad to zoom in, centering the view on it. From the View menu, select Align Active Camera to View. We're now looking through the camera. In Outliner, select the camera, then in Camera Panel, click Orthographic and set Scale to 2.2. Looks good. In Outliner, select the Sun Disk object. Tab to Edit Mode and press A once or twice to select all. Press F to fill the polygon. Tab to Object Mode. In Outliner, select the Emitter object. Press Ctrl Up Arrow to enlarge the view. Press Alt-A to play the animation and wait for the prominences to develop. I stopped mine on frame 60, it looks good here. Press F12 to render. Then choose Save as Image from the Image menu. Set the output type to PNG RGB 8-bit and save the image as prominences.png. That completes part 1 of this tutorial. On to part 2, where we'll create the sun's corona.